Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. And today I'll be reviewing another obscure low budget feature folks from the Nifty 50s movie pack. Yep, another one here folks, of course. Because I just got to watching another one of these. So I've been reviewing a f uh, quite a few of these as it is anyway, so I figured, eh, what the hell, something to hurt. And of course, like I said multiple times before, this set is not genre specific. Which means, the films in here, just comes off like, from whatever genre. And this one I'm talking about comes off more of a drama kind of a thing. But that's fine. It's Captain Scarface. That's the one I'm reviewing, folks. Captain Scarface. Yes, sir. Also, it's on my. Yep. Again, for my movie to do list, I guess. Stuff to review. Got quite a few. Still got quite a few of these to go down. But anyway. Anyway, folks. As always, I do have the top of the plot, so let's get into it, shall we? The overall story of this film focuses on a man who is desperate to leave South America, books a passage on this freighter, and learns that the captain has made plans basically to force a scientist to precipitate a mission of great destruction. So yes, of course, things do become rather dangerous when the Soviets had made their own ship that contains an atomic device with the goal of selling the ship to the locks and to an area where they will ignite their ship in this atomic suicide mission, so to speak. So as you can guess, folks, the things in this film do become rather crazy as it goes on, of course. As the title of the film would suggest, yes, there is uh, an individual named Commander Scarface, and he pretty much wants to do what he wants to do. So anyway, with that aside, on shore at the particular hotel, a number of passengers are aboarding to the ship, and there's this character named Sam whom is in trouble and needs to get back to the United States quickly of course and yeah let's just say things do become rather interesting as the film continues with with this crazy wild inventor obviously so yeah pretty much crazy stuff is going on in this sort of film as I've said earlier folks this is a pretty low budget film which is fine of course um, this does show that you don't have to have a big budget to make a pretty solid film. So this movie does make good use of the story and they do attempt to make a good example of how a low budget feature can have pretty cool sets and can actually help to create some sort of atmosphere as it goes along and fits right with the story of course and the story itself does move on a pretty decent pace and as things start to you know unfold so that's of course pretty cool right there folks obviously and I can say that the action here is pretty cool the way it took place on you know, here and various areas even though it, this may not be the most adventurous type movie, but it doesn't necessarily have to. The story itself is actually pretty solid, and it didn't bore me. It did hold my attention throughout the entire film. The entire running time did feel quite right. It's barely over an hour or so. I can say that it's not that bad. Of course, you know, the bad guys of the, of the story do come off. Are they crazy, of course? And 
even if it does come off maybe a bit far-fetched to some degree, hey, it's a made-up story, so it didn't come off too bad, I guess. And it didn't come off too stupid or anything, so that's definitely a bright side there. I do like this film, and I don't regret watching it. Since I watched it, like I said a moment ago, it wasn't that long ago I got to watching this movie. Since it's still fresh in my mind, I thought, what the hell, oh, I'll review it. I did like the sets in this film, I did like the overall feel for it. And, and yes, it's not super well known, but hey, I'm not complaining because I usually would review obscure low budget films anyway. And the type of movies I would often review are usually cheaply made. So that's the thing, folks. And, yes, it's old. I'm reviewing another old ass movie again. But hey, I'm a top secret agent from Area 51. I've been, all, I've been around here over 100 years. So yeah, what to be exact, 119. You can get, you can really get down to it. So, yeah. I don't mind it. They don't make them like they used to. They sure don't. Anyway, so yeah, this was a rather poorly solid film as a whole. And I liked it, obviously. The music wasn't too bad, I suppose, because I, I did like what the world were doing with what they had. So it, it gets straight to the point pretty quickly, which is fine, of course. Because, like I said, th this movie is pretty short, it's not that long. It's barely over an hour. So, can we complain there, I guess? So, whatever. Anyway, the casting does a, the casting of this film does a pretty solid job. You do what it's supposed to do. And I can say the the supporting actors and actresses do a fairly solid job as well. I didn't mind them. And also, I can say that the... I guess the editing wasn't too bad, I suppose, because, you know, it did get to the point where it doesn't come off amateurs, and it come off rather professional. I did like the use of the the outfits that they wore throughout the entire film, really trying to give you the vibe of what they were trying to do, so that, that, that's definitely a good thing there, obviously. I did like the... Location scene. The location scene scenery wasn't too bad either. So, I'll say I recommend this film, folks. Yes, sir. Would I watch this movie again? Yeah, most likely. I I'll watch it again. Why the hell not? I'll give this movie an overall rating of a 7.3 out of 10. It gets a 7.3 out of 10 for me. As always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, oh yeah, see ya.